welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would film a video that I haven't done in a while. I think I've seen Samantha March do these kinds of videos and I'm pretty sure they're like pretty widespread now throughout YouTube. But I thought it would be fun to film a video called Palettes I Don't Regret Not Buying. Just some new palette launches that I decided to pass for whatever reason. Sometimes I say I'm not gonna buy something and I buy it anyway. It happens quite a bit actually. But the other day I was going through trend mode and I'm like, wow, I did a pretty good job saying no to some of these palettes because they're pretty awful palettes. So I thought it would be fun to film a little video and talk about a few palettes that I'm so happy I passed on. So without further blabbering, let's get into it. The first palette is the Melt Impulsive palette. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this one did kinda get my attention because I love my Melt Smoke Sessions palette. I never was quick enough to get the Gemini and now that it's available at Sephora, I do get tempted every once in a while, but I have the Kaleidos green palette. Uh, I think it's called Astro... I can't remember, but the like the Melt dupe that they have. And I think that's the perfect dupe for it. And I also have the Juicy Olive palette. I haven't really had a need for the Gemini palette. And then the 27 palette I bought and did not enjoy and it like completely shattered on me when I bought it. So. They tried to send me replacements multiple times and the formula was so unstable. I sent it back a few times and then I was just done. Trying to get a replacement, I just got my money back and I walked away from it. So the Smoke Sessions was a pleasant surprise because it's pretty decent. Mine does puff out of the pans, but I think from the new Smoke Session palettes that I've seen at Sephora, you should be fine if you purchase it from Sephora. I think they've tweaked the formula. So I'm not worried about the formula anymore, but the Impulse palette, what really turned me off was the color combination. I really, really feel like it's two palettes that got mashed together, and then they're selling it for like 60 bucks, which I think is a little bit ridiculous. I think it would have been more successful as just a small palette, like two palettes, and then having it be $30 each, and then whichever color scheme you preferred, you could pick one. So I really liked like the orangey greeny side more than the purple side, so I didn't understand why they had to marry the two together. I didn't like the staggered like stairs looking packaging. It was just an all round hot mess, so I'm really glad I passed on it. The next palette was honestly one that was so insignificant and unmemorable that I'm sure most of you would be like, huh? What palette are you talking about? So I'm talking about the Lorac Neon Lights palette. I think there was like buzz about it for like two seconds. I don't know if Lorac does any PR. I didn't see anyone using it. I actually, I can't think of anyone I, I know that picked up that palette. I know Lorac used to be like the brand for a while. Especially when I first started getting into makeup, I had all the uh, pro palettes. I bought the big ones, 50 shades of brown palettes that Lorac came out with. I wanted and I was so obsessed with the brand. And now I wouldn't touch Lorac with a 10 foot pole. I just don't like their formula. I don't like their packaging. So a lot of people were really excited to see them do like a neon palette which was smaller, more curated and colorful because we hadn't seen them do such vibrant colors ever, I don't think. So that was exciting, but oh gosh, it was such a miss for them. And I really, really hope to see them come back, but I don't know if they will, to be very honest. But they're bopping around still, if anybody's interested. Uh, the next palette I don't regret not buying is the BH Cosmetics Marvin Ma Magnificent palette. This one was a bit of an atrocity as well. I was on a BH kick for a while, I'm not gonna lie. I was like drinking that stuff like it was Kool-Aid and I was, I couldn't get enough of BH and now I've just kind of realized that they're not my favorite palettes. I just bought them because they were affordable and I could use Afterpay, but I was placing like ridiculous amounts of orders buying stupid cheap makeup that I never really spend time 
enjoying. Don't get me wrong, there's definitely some gems from the brand. I don't think all of their stuff is junk, but I don't need to buy all of it to appreciate it. Happy to have skipped on that. The next palette is the Kylie You're So Money Baby palette, and this was in celebration of our 22nd birthday. I think this palette has definitely been drugged through the mud by many, many, many YouTubers, and I just wanted to throw my hat in the ring and say I agree with most everything people said about this palette. It's so ostentatious. It's so obnoxious. It's such a, like... I don't know, I'm okay with people being wealthy, that's not my problem, but when your audience is typically like a younger age group, like, is it right for you to tell people like flaunt your wealth or look at me flaunting my wealth or making people feel like buying makeup is going to make them, you know, a millionaire, billionaire status, I don't know, you know? And then to think that that whole family is basically famous because like Kim Kardashian's dad, not even like Kylie and Kendall's dad, but Kim and Courtney and uh, what Chloe's dad and Rob, their dad, Rob Kardashian, defended. Was he the main defense lawyer for O.J. Simpson's trial? I don't even know that people younger than me would know that. And so, yeah, just just in case one of you youngins is watching my channel, that's why the family is sort of known and that's why they had so many famous friends and then Kim Kardashian became really popular because she had a sex tape with Ray J who I bet none of you know anymore because I don't know the last time he made music he was sort of big when I was in like high school but now she's like way more famous than him and then she's just well known for marrying rich guys and then not sticking with them. So I don't know, did she marry? Who did she marry? Ah, uh, who was her first husband? I don't even know. And then there was that football player she married and got divorced in like 72 hours. That was like a huge story back in the day. And then she married Kanye. Um, and they've been together for a while, so that's nice. But that whole family basically got famous because of her sex tape, and then she was hanging out with, like, Paris Hilton and the likes, and then she got, they got the show Keeping Up With The Kardashians on E! Network, and then they kind of blew up and had so many, like, spin-offs and things like that, but, oh, God, it's, yeah. When I really start dissecting it, it's it's really kind of pathetic how um, much we've elevated them to celebrity status based off of um, their very uh, interesting contributions to the world, I guess I could say. And so Kylie and Kendall are just products of the wheel because they were her, Kim, their Kim Kardashian stepsisters. Um, are they step or half? Half sisters. Half sisters, not stepsisters. Half sisters, and that's how they got thrown into the mix because they were on the show at a very young age and grew up on TV and then are just obnoxiously rich from the show and then Kylie started her makeup line what when she was like 17 or something like that and has had her makeup line for quite some time now and this was her birthday collection because she usually does one every year for her birthday so yeah, anyway, that was a long story. Let me know down below what other fun, unknown Kardashian facts you might know. I would love to hear what you guys think. Anyway, I didn't really hate the color story. I just really hated the messaging and the branding behind that whole birthday setup. And I wish she had done something a little bit different um, for her younger audience. So number five is Kim with the matte and smoke uh, the matte smoke and cocoa palettes each retailing for $45 those palettes I think are actually fun if that's your vibe I can totally see people picking those up for everyday use but if you even wear makeup every day you probably already have a go-to palette full of neutral shades like that and you probably don't need it, so you probably didn't need to buy it. <laughs> I 
told myself that if I saw it on sale, I may consider it, but honestly, the smoke palette is so not me, and I have the cocoa palette a hundred times over in my makeup collection, so very happy I haven't picked those up. The next palette I am so glad I didn't buy is Viseart Neutral Matte Palette, uh, and it's palette number two, so I have the original neutral matte palette and it's one of my just like easy ones where I don't have to think too much about what I'm doing with it. I don't think I'll ever get rid of it because it's such a staple in my collection and the neutral matte 2 palette kind of caught me off guard. There is a pink and a blue shade in that palette which really confused me. I didn't quite understand why they were included. Um, some people said because blue is kind of like a primary color and it kind of tied into the neutral theme. I don't really know or care. I just thought it was a very interesting palette. It was like, don't fix what's not broken. You know, there was nothing wrong with the neutral palette they had. And, um... I get that they need to, you know, come out with new things so often so people are interested in brands and keep buying from them. I don't know, it's a very it's a very unnecessary palette in their lineup if you ask me, but I st I see people out there using them and they seem to like them. I like my matte neutral Viseart palettes. It's just I don't know why they needed a part 2. It didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. Okay, number 9, the Lime Crime Venus Vivids palette. Now this is another rainbow palette. People were pretty excited. Even I thought it was an interesting um, kind of way or an interesting direction that Lime Crime was taking because they've always kind of been the rebels of the makeup industry in my mind. Like if we were going to give Lime Crime a superlative, I would say like rebels, you know? It's kind of funny because none of their eyeshadow palettes really were that rebellious. They were very, you know, toned down almost. Um, I know people love the Venus palettes. I couldn't, you know, get away from the Venus 1 and Venus 2 when they originally launched. People were going nuts for them. Not my favorite formula by any means, so I didn't really, like, get into the hype. I did buy the first Venus palette. Didn't like it, I ended up returning that sucker because actually Lime Crime comes on Nordstrom uh, Holt Look. On Holt Look, they were on Holt Look and that's where I bought it. I didn't like it so I sent it back. <laughs> and no, I sold it to a friend actually who liked it. That's what happened. I didn't return it. So anyway, not a fan of the Venus formula and this, you know, Neon Vivids uh, line is interesting, but not for me, so glad I didn't buy it. Next is the Natasha Denona Coral Palette. Natasha Denona is so hit or miss, I just can't get over it. She is one of those brands I never, 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 never wanted to get into because I had previously bought one of her five pan palettes thought it was horrendous, the formula was so unstable, one was like shattered, and I just didn't enjoy it. I ended up decluttering that palette, never to be seen or heard from again, and I basically vowed not to buy any more Natasha Denona. Well then the gold palette came out and that broke me because the color story, I just loved the color story in the gold palette, and it's one of my favorite palettes, probably of all time. It's that good and now I've been picking up here and there her launches because I felt like her formula had finally got to a good place. Well, this coral palette, I think I saw Samantha March bought it and she said one of her shades like fell out or like shattered. Just like not the greatest, you know, reviews from Samantha which like made me flash back to when I had bought the five pan palette and I was like, oh, Natasha, like, why you do this to me, girl? Why? Why? You know? So, yeah, I'm really happy I didn't buy the coral palette. I wasn't really interested in the color story either. I didn't think it was, like, the best take on a coral palette. I thought it was very meh. So, 
passed on that. And the next palette that I am glad I passed on is the OPV Tropical Vibe Palette. Now, OPV, I believe, is based in the UK or maybe Italy. I can't quite remember. And uh, this is a fun palette. It looks like a muted, colorful palette. And I want to try the brand, but it wasn't, again, one that really, like, drew me in. And so it was pretty easy, actually, for me to say no to this one, um, as I'd never tried the brand before. So it's one of those brands I'm curious about, but this wasn't the palette that sold me on it. So I'm very happy that I didn't pick that one up either. So that is it for my 10 eyeshadow palettes that I do not regret not buying. And I would love to hear from you guys. Let me know down in the comments a palette that you don't regret not buying. I would love to know what that is for you guys. Thank you so much for spending time with me and I will see you in my next one soon. Bye!